What is accessibility? According to Merriam-Webster, it is the state of something being available or capable of being reached. In simpler terms, accessibility is just making our world and events available for the widest range of people possible. But what does this actually mean? And what does it mean for theater creators, performers, and audience members? Especially in a world where accessibility is becoming a more and more important conversation to have. Hi, my name is Julia Peterson, and this is Access Design with Global Hive, where we aim to answer those questions one accessibility tactic at a time. Today we're going to be talking about touch tours and audio description, two ways of making any show more accessible for people with any type of visual impairment. Audio description may be a term some of you are already familiar with, as it is an accessibility tactic employed for film and TV as well. According to the American Council of the Blind, audio description is a form of narration that describes the literal actions taking place on the stage or screen, alongside the regular soundtrack and audio for the show. Audio description includes describing the size, colors, and placement of the set, along with the physical descriptions of actors, their facial expressions, and their actions and movements during any given scene. For example, let's take a look at the introduction of Global Hive Laboratory's Medusa in which the actors describe themselves for the benefit of the audience. I am standing in a wide space. The space is 11 feet deep by 23 feet wide. The floor and walls are black. The audience is seated in front of me, to my right and to my left. Six other performers join me in the space. Collectively, we are the chorus. We embody a garden of statues. We are all dressed in black. My name is Rhiannon. I'm five foot eight. My eyes are green. My hair is dark blonde and crop short. My skin is pale. If you notice, the language used in this scene is as simple and straightforward as possible. Traditionally, audio description is meant to be basic and to the point allowing listeners to form their own ideas and opinions of the action without influencing it via adjectives and poetic language. Another common aspect of audio description is that it is usually delivered through headphones, which audience members receive at the beginning of the show. Through these headphones, audio description is delivered during natural pauses in dialogue. Audio description may seem deceptively simple. After all, it's just describing, right? but it's actually a skill that takes a lot of hard work and training. The great thing about audio description is, almost anyone can be trained to use it. And thanks to the World Wide Web, there are plenty of resources out there for those who want to learn. I'm going to be leaving a couple links down in the description for resources about audio description. And I highly recommend checking out the Audio Description Project on acb.org ADP if you want to learn more. Touch tours, meanwhile, are a more tactile way of helping audience members who are blind or low vision experience what is happening on stage. It's exactly what it sounds like. Touch tours are tours held usually about an hour before a show, where audience members are invited on stage to feel around the set and are told about important visual cues in the show beforehand. Touch tours go hand in hand with audio description in making a complete, accessible theater experience for people with low vision. To get a better idea of how touch tours work, I spoke to Iris Solat, a Chicago-based director and theater creator who has run tours for her own shows and for others. Iris herself has achromatopsia, a form of low vision, and is always working to make her own shows more accessible. So I am familiar with like the methodology of leading people who are completely blind around a stage and like showing them the key props. Volunteers can lead the patrons onto the stage and they can walk around the parts that are safe enough to walk around. Usually they're free to like touch the scenery to get an idea of how it feels. And then with any significant props or costume pieces where like it's a thing that they're going to use, like in um like the show I production managed, it was for a company called Pride Films and Plays and it was called the roller derby play, we passed around like one of the helmets that was used and a few other props. And so usually like a touch tour includes patrons holding and touching the props with their hands. So 
yeah, that's, that's what a touch tour usually includes. Let's see, I think just that when possible, try to include as many people as you can. Because I know like things like audio description and sign language interpretation, they can be expensive. So like not every theater can afford to do that for every production. But if your theater is one that has the resources, like make that a regular part of your season. And like from what I've observed, if theaters make that a regular thing where they can make sure they have like one audio described performance per show, then they start to build that following and they do become known in the community as a theater that values accessibility. So also like theaters can always just ask people who have um, visual impairments or people who are deaf or people who have any disability about what accessibility they need because um, that's because they're the ones who are using it. Well said, Iris. If you're interested in touch tours and want to learn more, go to artbeyondsight.org for an introductory course in how touch tours work and how you can integrate them into your own shows. I'm Julia Peterson, and this has been Access Design with Global Hive. Tune in next time where we talk about more accessibility tactics that you can use and encourage in your own theater communities. Special thanks to Iris Solat for her wonderful interview. I will be linking her website down in the description so that you can check out some of her shows. Make sure to follow Global Hive on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and check out our website at globalhivelabs.org. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time!